For more insights on the economy and the Fed's policy meeting this week, we want to bring in Seth Carpenter. He is Global Chief Economist at Morgan Stanley. And, and Seth, riddle me this. We, we just got this 4.9% GDP number. Things are going gangbusters, better than most of the rest of the globe. And yet, we are concerned. You've got a great jobs market, great numbers that are coming in. Why does it not feel like that? Why does it feel like everybody is waiting for things to turn over? I think there are lots of cross currents, and the fact that the Fed has raised interest rates by over five percentage points, I think, is a really big part of people's uh, discomfort, right? So they're sort of trying to sort out what are the lags of monetary policy, how long does it take for those interest rate uh, increase, increases to bite. I will also say, though, for the GDP report, no two ways about it, very strong report. However, 1.3-ish percentage points of that strong number came from inventory builds. It's not the sort of thing you expect to continue for a while. There's some evidence that some of the services spending was probably a little bit of a one-off as people sort of still doing a little bit of that revenge spending on, on new experiences. And so we fully think things will slow down in the fourth quarter. That said, we might be slightly more optimistic than most from the beginning of this rate hiking cycle, we have said the U.S. is not going into recession. So when everyone was having the debate hard landing versus soft landing, we never, never thought it was going to be a hard landing. And so maybe we're just a little bit more comfortable saying things have to slow down, but probably not crash. Is Steve right? Is the Treasury going to be the main show this week versus the Fed? Uh, I wouldn't say the main show, but I think they're a big part of the show, much bigger than usual. I remember when I was at Treasury, President Obama had named me to be Assistant Secretary for Financial Markets, doing those press conferences on the quarterly refunding, and it was always sort of third-tier news. Uh, that's not the case anymore. The sell-off in the Treasury market is huge, and I think people are going to be asking, what is Janet Yellen, Josh Frost, and the folks there at Treasury, what are they going to do when it comes to refunding the debt, how much are they going to do in coupons, the longer end of the curve, how much in bills. My sense is, given how much we've seen the sell-off in the longer end, the need to sort of weight the issuance in the longer end goes down. And so maybe you see a slight rotation, a little bit less of an increase at the long end, a little bit more towards bills. In terms of what we should be looking for from the Fed, I, I take it you're in agreement, you don't think that they'll raise rates Correct. this time? So what, what will you be watching? What will you be listening for? So got to hear what they are looking at. Uh, clearly, inflation has come down, and it's come down a lot faster than where their own forecasts have been. So in their forecasts at the June FOMC meeting, at their forecasts at the September FOMC meeting, they had forecasts for inflation for this year that were 3.7%, 3.9% for core inflation. There's just no way we're going to get those sorts of outturns with the data, and we think we're going to undershoot. And so how they're balancing that lower-than-expected inflation against an unquestionably stronger real side of the economy. I think that's really where the, 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 the rubber meets the road. You, you sound pretty sanguine, are you? <laughs> well, I'm an economist who spent a bunch of time in Washington, so I worry all the time about everything. Uh, but, you know, we have been reasonably confident that the U.S. economy was not going to be going into recession this year when lots of people were saying, oh, my gosh, the Fed's never raised interest rates this much without a recession. There's still a long way to go before we're sort of done with this cycle. But uh, I'm feeling pretty good for the near term, the next couple of quarters. For you sure. know, I was looking at rates at this point, even if they don't do anything else to raise it. You've got credit cards north of 20 percent right now. You've got mortgage. 8%. You've got auto loans north of 7%. And you've got student loans on the federal level at 5.5%. I mean, that sucks up a lot of the spending power. And it's hard to think that that is not going to have a pretty major impact. I completely agree. And that's exactly what we're looking for is a substantial slowdown. We don't think the strength that we saw in the third quarter can continue. Looking for a bit of a payback in the fourth quarter, continued slowing uh, into the first quarter. And so then a really grudging not zero and not negative growth in, the, in, in 2024, but really grudging, barely above zero kind of thing. So slowing down a lot. It's got to be well below the 4% that we saw. So the only thing that would throw off that expectation, I, I think you would probably say, would be as if there's a problem in the financial, uh, in the financial sector and something breaks there, then all bets are off. And then that, is that what it would take to get a worse than expected recession or downturn? So I, I'd go along with that. I think you never want to underestimate the risks that can come from the financial sector. We saw in March of this year that we had sort of an acute situation with several banks that could clearly, at a time when the economy is already slowing down, sort of another stranglehold further on credit could, could 
tip things, tip the balance to a downturn. I think there is a lot to think about, though, with consumers. The upper end of the income distribution is doing just fine and still spending, but the middle and lower end of the income distribution, they are feeling the pain of these higher interest rates, the student loan repayments that you mentioned. All of that is conspiring to crimp their spending. Our baseline view is that it's going to be evened out by the stronger spending at the top end, and we'll, we'll have this deceleration, but it won't fall off of a cliff. But I think that's another area of concern is how much pain is the, the lower half of the income distribution going to feel. Okay.